Good afternoon. My name is Franklin Wong, and today I will be talking about the monodromy groups of indecomposable rational functions. Monodromy groups are a property of rational functions. My project deals with finding all possible monodromy groups of indecomposable rational functions. First of all, what are rational functions? Rational functions are quotients of polynomials, like this expression. Rational functions arise naturally both in math and in many sciences. Their fundamental nature is what inspired me to conduct this project. Some rational functions, like x to the n, behave qualitatively differently than most rational functions. When proving results about rational functions, such unusual functions are especially important since they often possess the deepest structure. Therefore, for nearly a century, mathematicians have attempted to classify all of these unusual rational functions. However, they have not been able to crack the hardest cases. By addressing those cases, my project essentially completes this endeavor. How do we classify rational functions? We use their monodromy groups and their ramification types. If rational function f has degree n, then the monodromy group is an associated set of permutations on n objects. Most rational functions have monodromy groups equal to a n or s n. In many ways, these functions behave randomly, meaning that we can take them to act like the average rational function. Another invariant of rational functions is their ramification type. These are collections of multi-sets of positive integers, such that the sum of the elements in each multi-set is equal to n. The monodromy group and the ramification type encapsulate almost all the structure present in a rational function. Therefore, just knowing the values of these two invariants suffice to answer many questions about rational functions. For example, Mathematicians have applied monodromy groups and ramification types of rational functions to answer questions in many fields of math, including differential equations, dynamical systems, and topology. While these are pretty major results, my project massively advances our understanding of rational functions and their ramification types and monodromy groups. Therefore, it will have even deeper implications. Now let me talk about my problem statement, which asks about these non-random rational functions. How can a rational function be non-random? One way is for the rational function to be decomposable, meaning that it can be written as the composition of lower degree rational functions. For example, x to the sixth is decomposable, since x to the sixth is equal to x cubed then squared. Every decomposable degree n rational function has monodromy group different from an or sn, meaning that they aren't random. However, there are ways for indecomposable rational functions to be non-random too. Therefore, we ask, which indecomposable degree n rational functions have monodromy groups different than a n or s n? A result for this question will immediately yield results for all rational functions, since indecomposable rational functions really are the building blocks of all rational functions, just like prime numbers are the building blocks of the integers. With this question in mind, I'm pleased to announce my main result. If f of x is an indecomposable degree n rational function and is not random, one of three things is true. First, n is either a prime, a square, or a triangular number. Second, n is at most 455. Third, the group G is an almost simple group of bounded size. A direct consequence of this result is the proof of a conjecture by Goralnik and Shereshin. Speaking of Gorelnik, I was quite excited to see on Wednesday that the American Math Society has decided to award him the 2018 Cole Prize in Algebra. The proof of this result depends both on pre previous contributions as well as some new ingredients. Let me give a brief history. In what follows, let f of x be an indecomposable degree n rational function. Let g be the monodromy group of f of x, and let h be a point stabilizer of g. This can mean g is n times bigger than the group h. Assume that g is not equal to an or sn, so the rational function is not random. In 1876, Lou showed that since f is indecomposable, the group h is a maximal proper subgroup of g. In 1922, Zariski found all possibilities in the case when g is a solvable group. Intuitively, this solvability condition means that the group is especially convenient to work with. In 1985, Oshbacher-Scott found all possibilities for the pair of groups G and H. 
showing that they belong to one of five possible classes, A, B, C1, C2, and C3. Three papers in the 1990s found all possibilities in cases A, B, C1, C2. These are some pretty major mathematicians. Combined, they've won one Fields Medal, two National Medals of Science, three Wolf Prizes, and four Cole Prizes with the addition of Guralnik. They made great contributions to this problem. However, there's five cases total, and they only addressed four. One case is missing, and that case is C3. Why has case C3 gone unresolved after 25 years? As Guralnik and Thompson said in 1989, the analysis of case C3 promises to be difficult. And my project is all about the case C3. In the case C3, the monodromy group G is close to the product of several copies of a simple group L. The analysis then splits into three cases, C3.1, C3.2, and C3.3. Case C3.1 was solved when the group L is sufficiently large through the combined efforts of several mathematicians, culminating in the major papers Liebeck Shalev, 1999, and Frohart Magar, 2001. Frohart is actually with us today. My project completely resolves the cases C3.2 and C3.3, subsuming previous work by Guralnik, Neubauer, Shureshin, and many others. In order to deal with the cases C3.2 and C3.3, I introduced a new approach which combines methods from Galois theory, representation theory, algebraic geometry, and group theory, along with a new computer algorithm. Here are the details in the case C3.2. In this case, the group G is A, D, or S, D, and the group H is a maximal proper subgroup of G. In case one, the group H is imprimitive. Here, we use results on the representation theory of S, D to relate this imprimitivity condition into a condition of the genera of the two-set, three-set, and four-set stabilizers of the group G. Using the riemann hurwitz formula, we're able to rewrite this as a condition on the ramification type. Here, we rearrange, using algebraic manipulation, this condition on the ramification type into a condition on each individual ramification multiset. This is the key step in our project. Then, using a depth-first search computer algorithm, we can build each ramification multiset first by the number of ones, then the number of twos, then the number of threes. Using pruning, a technique from computer science, this algorithm runs extremely quickly. In the second case, the group H is primitive. Here, we can show that not only is the group H primitive, but also it's three homogeneous. This is a very strong condition on a group, which essentially forces it to be three homogeneous. Then, using the riemann hurwitz formula again, we can relate this condition into a condition on the orbit counts of the generators of the group G. Using Burnside's lemma, we can relate the orbit counts of an element to the fixed point counts. Finally, we can bound the fixed point counts using linear algebra since we know that the groups are matrix groups. An example of a result we use is that the subspace of a parent space has size dividing that of the parent space. In both cases, we use Riemann's existence theorem to determine whether or not a given collection of multisets and a monodromy group actually happens for some rational function. Riemann's existence theorem tells us that this is equivalent to the existence of a product one tuple, which generates a monodromy group. Frobenius' formula for representation theory allows us to count the number of product one tuples over a given ramification type. Then, using some combinatorics, we can filter out the monodromy groups which are actually generated. The proven case C3.3 is similar. Now let me talk about the applications of my results. My results represent a significant advance in our understanding of rational functions, which are a fundamental mathematical object. This is both direct and indirect applications. On the math side, my results will likely yield vast generalizations of major results, like Nevin-Lina's five values theorem for meromorphic functions, as well as Mazur's theorem on the uniform boundedness of rational torsion of elliptic curves. On the practical side, any fundamental advance in math or science will have countless practical applications. One potential application of my result is to engineering, where some phenomena, like col the collapse of this bridge, can be understood with rational functions. Had my results been known at the time of the design of the bridge, it is possible that this bridge would not have collapsed. I certainly hope that my results can be used to ensure that future infrastructure is safer, thus ensuring that disasters like this never occur again. 
This work would not have been possible without several individuals who I would like to acknowledge here. First, I'd like to thank my mentor, Professor Michael Z from the University of Michigan. I'd like to thank Danny Nefton from the Israel Institute of Technology, who checked a few proofs. I'd like to thank the Primes USA program run by the MIT Department of Mathematics for matching me with Dr. Z. I'd like to thank my high school, Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. I'd like to thank my Research Science Institute mentors, Ravi Jagadisan and Professor Scott Comners from Harvard University for giving me general advice on writing the paper. Lastly, I'd like to thank George Washington University, the Siemens Foundation, and judges like you. I hope you enjoyed listening to my project as much as I enjoyed doing it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>